The one main thing that stands out to me when I take a look back at Battlefield 5 is the lack of action taken by DICE when the community has had a well-formed opinion on a serious matter. In previous Battlefield games this has also been the case in places, but for the most part we've had a solid dialogue between both the developers and the community with feedback taken seriously. Throughout the life of Battlefield 5, I've left feedback at pretty much every opportunity I've had, as many of you have as well. Whether it was a feedback form, a post on social media, a reply to an official post by DICE or verbally at an event, feedback has been given everywhere. DICE have clearly been quite energetic about asking for this feedback as well, however, I don't really feel as if any of it has been rightly acted upon. Why is that? In this video I'm going to take a look at why feedback is important, but also why DICE might not have always acted on it. It's certainly a complicated subject, and without access into the inner workings of DICE as a studio, it's pretty much impossible to work out why they haven't acted on some of the valuable feedback we've left. It is definitely worth talking about though, because feedback and the way it's acted upon is definitely an interesting subject. Listening to community feedback, taking notes and extracting the very best posts is essential to creating a good game. Sure, we all know that it's impossible for any developer to listen and act on everything the community demands. It's also extremely impractical and would result in a broken mess of a game with one person shouting for one thing whilst another asks for the opposite. The skill of finding those posts that reflect the opinion of the vast majority and also offer constructive criticism with potential answers to the problem is the key. BF5 has highlighted to me that some in the DICE office want feedback. They want to know if we liked their idea and if, let's take a new map as an example, the content is working as intended and bug free. Too often though we have been asked to leave feedback only to see nothing change whatsoever. All of this talk saying we're listening, yet I'm not seeing any action. I'd rather be told that our feedback isn't being acted upon, no matter the time spent putting it together or reception it received from other people in the community. The fact also that many developers on Twitter seem to take direct offence from constructive criticism is also quite baffling. I don't think they mean to do it on purpose and it's certainly only a few developers but in my opinion they represent the company and it's their responsibility even on these private accounts to uphold certain values. I certainly can't post half the things they post for my work, I can't go on social media and start arguments with people, it just won't fly, I won't be allowed to do it so I'm kind of unsure why they're allowed to. I guess this shows though the tensions within the studio and between the studio and the community tensions are certainly high all over the place it's not just within the player base because we often have arguments on social media but it's also within the people that actually make the game it's quite an odd scenario to be in the difficulty with community feedback is that honestly most of it is actually terrible it's interesting to actually read through the feedback that people give and watch one person pulling one way whilst the other pulls the other way and honestly you can't do anything with that really. They say that 90% of everything is rubbish and that's not just feedback, just in general 90% of most stuff is rubbish but 10% is really good. Take a look at the Battlefield 5 subreddit whenever you have a chance and you'll see what I mean. You have some people asking for one thing, others asking for a completely unrealistic change, some demanding the game is free to play, whilst a select few might be praising every move DICE makes. The best example I could think of brought me back to an episode of The Simpsons from years ago. Homer gets the opportunity to consult on the design phase of a new car, and without hesitation, the company listen to his every wish. They take all his feedback, he gets everything that he wants, and they don't even question it. It's a train wreck. The Homer. <gasps> that being said, this isn't really the way Battlefield works. DICE obviously make the game. They might take a bit of feedback from a few select community members during the development stage, but they test it, they then release it to us, and we give our feedback on it. They can then change a few things over the development cycle, but they can't obviously change the whole direction of the game. It's very difficult to do that. 
What I'm saying though with this feedback, it's the small things that need to be changed. Let's take an example of the 10% of good feedback. It could be a upvoted post saying, please don't change the TTK dice. That is really simple feedback to act on. You see the TTK is being changed. The community say, please don't, we like it as it is. It's massively upvoted. It has huge traction. That is the feedback that is very simple to look at and go, okay, we're not gonna change it. Maybe it's an upvoted post saying, let's keep grind as a permanent mode because that's what we want. Even with the limitations on the UI, I'm sure DICE could make that happen. If DICE wanted to, and I'm referring to them here as DICE because I don't want to pinpoint any individual as I don't really know who's responsible for this, I'm sure they could find those golden comments and put them to use. It doesn't seem to be that complicated from where I'm sitting, it surely is in reality. Let's keep with that car design analogy from earlier on in the video though. The car in this case is Battlefield 5. If I'm offering feedback on the design of the car and I say it needs a flatbed in the back so I can carry my tools to work, that feedback will probably go to the side and you won't deal with it. We're designing a car, not a truck. It's not really relevant. If someone though offers feedback saying the seat is uncomfortable, that feedback is great. We can look into fixing that and it's something that will definitely go to the top of the pile. That's kind of the way I see feedback and the way it works. And DICE need to really stay on that mission of creating what they set out to create whilst fixing little bits along the way. And I think that's how they try and do it. They shouldn't bend to unnecessary pressure, but they do need to be flexible if things are going to be changed and the community say we just don't want it. It's an incredibly difficult balance to find. On the flip side of this though, and I'm talking about 90% of feedback is rubbish and that argument, it's a dangerous game to think you know better than the community. And this isn't just in the case of Battlefield 5, it's in the case of any product that's being created for a consumer. If nearly everybody disagrees with your idea or your change, there is a good chance that your idea is part of that 90%, i.e. it's bad. Again, the TTK change is the perfect example. I know that the Battlefield 5 subreddit doesn't represent or define the entire community. However, it does give a good impression of the general ballpark opinion of Battlefield players. If a post gets huge downvotes, it probably means people don't like it. And if it gets massive upvotes, then people probably do like it. There are exceptions to the rule, but for you know a ballpark way of looking at it, ballpark figures, that's probably about right. One simple idea that helped in previous Battlefield games was a community test environment for many reasons that I'm not going to go into here and some that I just don't know. We can't have one in Battlefield 5. This, though, acted as a cauldron, almost, for the community to jump in and bounce ideas around, try new things out. The devs could then take what they wanted from that. Everybody wins in that situation. It's certainly more work. As I said, it can't really work in BF5 with the way it updates, but... I'm sure they'll want one in the next game. From there, we'd get more polished content coming to the main game, so less bugs, less need for feedback, less need for this whole process. And although it certainly wasn't perfect, you know, you've got things where people don't like seeing content early, NDAs, all that stuff. I felt it was far more involved and a better process. There have been several examples where community feedback clearly hasn't been digested and understood by DICE during the life of BF5, and a CTE probably would have helped that problem. The TTK, again, being the most obvious. Instead of usual throwing it into Battlefield 5 and seeing how people react, they could have taken a CTE, tested it, seen what people think, looked at the data and said, well, maybe we don't need to do this a second time. Clearly the first time didn't work. When it comes to finding and reporting bugs, clearly... The community is good at that. They play the game and they find enough of them. And I certainly don't envy the person responsible for choosing what feedback goes in the important pile and what feedback goes into the shredder. However, it is certainly very important to ensure that feedback is responded to, even if it's, sorry, we're not going to fix that. Just a concise answer, not, it's coming soon. We're looking at that. Because as we've seen in Battlefield 5, you keep people waiting and waiting and waiting and you don't deliver and it's certainly not a good look. I'm interested to see what you have to say about this. It's kind of a weird rambling video, this one. I just had this idea in my head about community feedback and the amount that I've given for Battlefield 5 and the little responses I've had. Also, 
There's been a bit of controversy on Twitter recently that's then been replicated over onto Reddit about certain devs causing certain problems or whatever it is. Not that I'm getting involved in it, but it's certainly a topic that everybody's talking about. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like. If not, you are free to leave a dislike. A special shout out goes out to those at DICE that really wanted Battlefield 5 to be a success, but for whatever reason, it just hasn't fulfilled its potential and ultimately lost support and become a game that not that many people are playing. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.